Hello everybody and welcome to my review of Super Mario Has The Runs. It's a bit messy. Well looky here, the game industry finally did it. Mario is running while Sonic is jumping. <laughs> what a funny joke, I'm sure that won't get old, nah. Especially when Mario never runs and Sonic never jumps. Super Mario Run released on December 15th, 2016 in the UK for the iOS store of all places, meaning that Mario must finally be biting the bullet bill and heading out into the realm of other party support. So much for protecting their own precious little brand. <laughs> I heard a lot of things about Mario Run, I heard it was fun. And I heard it was bloody horrendous, and the App Store ratings kind of explain everything you need to know about the reception of this game. It's insanely down the middle. And what did I think of it? Well, as you can tell, this video is a few months late, so if you had asked me when this game was new, I would have told you that I was addicted to this game for weeks, I couldn't stop playing. But I could also see the other side of the argument and look at it like a steaming pile of squelch. And <laughs> overall, I've got to be honest, it's not that great of a game. In Mario Run, you play the entire game with one tap of the screen, while Mario, Peach, Yoshi, Luigi, and the wailing infected growths of pus do everything else, all with their own benefits like longer jumps and faster running. Does this mean that Nintendo are going down an even easier and more accessible kid-friendly route when it comes to their usual directional button, action button and jump commands in all of their other Mario games? Well if that were true then that would mean that Nintendo would expect every little child of their demographic to own half a thousand pounds worth of a pocket computer with access to Facebook and we all know that's a pretty shit mix. So no, despite the simplest premise and input commands to date for a Mario game it's actually one of the more challenging from him in a very long time but for equally fair and borderline unfair reasons. The one-tap mechanic I personally think is stretched out really well to incorporate a lot of really fun ways to get around every obstacle in the stage. You aren't just jumping with tapping, but also flipping after grabbing a ledge to attack whatever's above you, flipping after falling from a great height to attack again, spinning in midair to increase your jump distance, holding it down to bounce off of enemies, wall hopping, and as Mario runs automatically, he actually vaults over any kind of small ledge or enemies, so in order to kill the enemy, you need to tap while vaulting to knock them out and fly towards the sky, ready to chain a combo together as you keep jumping off of enemies, holding to get extra height and tapping again in midair to get some spinning distance. I mean, for literally just one button, in gameplay, there's a lot of planning and thought with when and how you should tap, and when you're going for the hidden coloured coins in every stage out of 24 in total, it can be one of the biggest challenges in a Mario game you'll ever experience, with stringing the biggest aerial combos above bottomless pits and knowing when to jump and wait for a second behind walls for fire bars and exhausts, and that's really cool to see that, even if it takes a while to start playing this not like a typical Mario game where everything you don't touch with your feet will kill you straight away. This all sounds great, and even with the more random coloured coin placements hidden in some of the stages, they're all so short that hitting replay and trying again isn't too much of a hassle, or dying actually. But at the end of the day, especially with the black coins and random placements of them, break open the cracks and flaws on what is ultimately not an amazingly designed Mario game. In the campaign, every fancy move other than jumping and wall jumping is completely obsolete and pointless to do, and everything you work your arse off for in the extremely short and replayed multiple times for no goddamn reason campaign all contributes to unlocking special decorations for your hub world, which can then give you even more coins to buy more decorations and earn more rally tickets for the online mode. I like decoration and unlocking more pretty things for my in-game world to customise. It's like Animal Crossing, but for everything else going on, this must mean the online element in a way should be the constant comeback to the game, since this is where you unlock all the other characters for a change up in gameplay and unlock some of the most special parts of the hub world to access even more bonus content. And I enjoy it for sure, but it's definitely still not perfect gameplay we have here. With the kind of online Toad Rally, you battle other people's ghosts in some of the most intense fights to get the most coins, all while doing as many tap tricks after ledge vaulting and enemy bopping combos as possible to impress spectating, dirty, skanky, sticky, screaming, hellish fun guy, and whoever has the most coins after a minute or so wins over every different coloured toad impressed by both you and your opponent doing tricks, meaning more stuff to unlock. This part of the game is what I kept coming back to because it incorporates and forces you to use absolutely every tapping trick in the book in order to win, but it's not just about tapping whenever you want to because that will get you killed. It's all about timing, bravery not to panic against the scariest amount of enemies, and doing it efficiently enough that you don't die and lose coins and go fast enough to pass a checkpoint to get bonus coins. And it makes you feel like a god for getting everything right and finding hidden invincible stars to kill everything and magnetise more coins. It's amazingly satisfying. And if you're not interested in decorating your kingdom, then the whole game kind of falls apart. Like, yeah, it's fun to replay the parts of the campaign missions and get all of the hidden coins and stuff, but the game itself never really gives you a reason to go after those higher scores, and the gameplay itself never changes from start to end. And for some of the stages, fucking hell, if you mess up one damn time, the entire rhythm of enemy movements, cannon firing, exhaust fire, and anything else doesn't take your death into consideration and completely fucks you over, ready to kill you for the rest of the stage. Since Mario does automatically run, some of the stages and their obstacles are actually based around the timing 
assuming that you haven't died once before. It's like from the start to that point. They're all based around that timing, but because Mario can die and go backwards, it can completely mess up the timing. If the stages, like in the Rayman Run games, were based more on level design rather than clever one-shot combo enemy placements and obstacles, this wouldn't be a problem and wouldn't make some of your Toad Rally losses feel very unfair because as it stands, it's ultimately flawed because of that and everything else I've said. I mean, if you lose your rhythm in a main stage, you start again, but fuck up in a Toad Rally where the best gameplay is and you lose absolutely everything with no control to correct yourself other than bloody jumping like a jumping bean in a jumper. Also, the game sometimes doesn't know if you're wall jumping or hanging off a ledge. That, that can be a problem. And to be honest with you, for one button tapping gameplay, I think the game does an excellent job of exploring all the different ways you can play the game with just that one tap. I think it does a really good job of exploring all the possibilities. But at the same time, I failed to see where my money was invested to with this, because some of the best indie games I've ever played in my life I got for half the price of this, if not less than that. Especially when you consider the only reward you get from the Toad Rally parts themselves are the ability to unlock more decorations, which you can put in your hub world, which give you a chance to earn more Toad Rally tickets so that you can play more Toad Rally. <laughs> and for the value, it's a little high-end for an iPhone game, absolutely, but for a new Mario game that looks great and plays smooth as butter is cheap. I mean, have you seen how much they still charge for a pre-owned copy of Mario Kart DS? Better that than it be riddled with microtransactions and waiting mechanics because Mario is too miserable and fat to run more than five levels before running out of energy that needs to be refilled every 24 hours. It's better than that, but is it worth it? Well, in my opinion, not at all, especially considering all the Rayman run games are better designed, lengthier, deeper, have more controls and variables to every stage, and even cheaper in comparison, but I still did really enjoy my time playing this when I was playing it. It took me a while to get all the coins in the campaign to complete the game, and I spent even more time in the endless toad rallies battling other players to steal their toads away and unlock more stuff to decorate my mushroom kingdom with, but how long that lasted with the insane lack of content and variety wasn't too great. So yeah, sorry again that this video was late because I would have told you that for a period of time I was addicted to this game and I really damn enjoyed it, but after I got to around 3,400 toads and I did most of the campaign missions on the hardest difficulties, I just completely lost interest. It fizzled out. But to be honest with you guys, if you think you'll enjoy this game by what you've seen so far, then give the free demo a try. Yeah, you can download the first world for free to give you a taste of what the game is going to be like, because to be honest with you, I think that sums up everything that the game is in the first world, and you can decide whether or not you want to spend money on it at that point or not. And with everything considered today, I'm going to give Super Mario Run a 5 out of 10. What's that? Oh, hi Nintendo. What was that? Oh, wait, you can only play the game in online mode? No exceptions? At all? Even when you don't want to do the toad running? Oh my goodness gracious! Four out of ten. Oh, that's terrible. God. And wait until the game's a lot cheaper as well. Fix that. If it's your birthday today watching this video, happy freaking birthday to you. And please remember to stay beautiful. Ay, 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 ay.